if you're here, you maybe you already want to write your plugins or you want to get started with writing custom plugins. Um, I've found in, in my environment that uh, we have about, I'd, I'd say about half of the plugins that we use are custom written uh, because you can only go so far with the, with the uh, available built-in ones because life is complicated. And in particular, the difference between OK and warning is sometimes complicated. And you end up going beyond uh, the functionality you can get out of the box. I started early, everybody uh, who's just coming in now. You're not late. It's fine. The reasons why we are uh, speaking in Perl today uh, is because uh, it's familiar, it's uh, cross-platform, the CPAN, the Comprehensive Perl Archive Network, has thousands and thousands of modules to tie into uh, almost anything you can think of, from Lego Robotics to Facebook to um, whatever. That'd be cool. And uh, Nagios hooked up to a Lego robot, you know, that went and turned off the power in the data center or something, you know, or whatever. <coughs> Um, in particular, the uh, the plugin or the Perl module for writing plugins uh, is well developed, and it's something that you might want to consider even if you're working in another language. Uh, as you know, as you design how you're writing your plugins, uh, they are both very simple and very repetitive. Uh, after you after you start thinking about the more complex aspects of plugins, and so. Having a li library that you can reuse for all your plugins is an advantage. Uh, Mike Weber earlier um, talked about how Perl plugins can be more of a performance load than compiled plugins. And uh, he cited statistics uh, that they can take 10 to 44 times as much resources, uh, a plugin written in Perl, compared to a C plugin. Uh, however, there's a there's an option that's no longer the default in Nagios to uh, enable the embedded Perl interpreter. And that, in theory, should cut um, that performance penalty to almost nothing. Um, in practice, we have a couple hundred checks on a Nagios server. Uh, no, a couple, a couple hundred hosts, each with maybe a dozen checks. We have no performance issues. The other things on the box are far worse than Nagios. But we are using the embedded Perl interpreter. Uh, there are some gotchas. I'll show you one of them as we go along when using the embedded Perl. Uh, but it's worth doing. It, it's a good way of doing things. Similar to the uh, mod Perl module for Apache back in the day, uh, that, was, that was a way of increasing performance by a factor of 100 or something, uh, because you could, you could compile Perl into Apache with mod Perl, and then it would know how to execute Perl scripts. It would, um, so Perl CGIs would run just as, as native C code uh, in Apache, because it would, the first time it hit them, it would c interpret the script and then hold it in memory and execute it over and over again. And EPN works the same way. Uh, so like I said, I don't have a huge I've never had a performance problem with Nagios, so I don't, I don't know. My strategy is wait till you have a performance problem before you start optimizing, because premature optimiz optimization is bad. And uh, Perl is affectionately uh, named the Swiss Army Chainsaw of Programming Languages, uh, both for its flexibility and its inelegance. Um, Depends on what you're trying to do. Sometimes the chainsaw is the best job, or the best tool for the job. Sometimes it's not. Anyway, if you don't like Perl, if you feel like this, um, use whatever you want, and uh, try to take some of the, the, the bigger picture ideas. 
let's see. I think we already, we, we have like a couple Windows users who are going to connect to their uh, Linux or Unix machines. Anybody else running Linux or anybody else running Windows here that wants to use Perl? Oh, I use Active Perl for that. You use Active Perl? Okay. It should work. Um, I've had a little more difficulty installing plugins or installing Perl modules with Active Perl. Uh, I compiled it, so I don't have to install it with Active Perl on each, each node. Okay. So I compiled it and just use executable on the Oh, so you use Active Perl to build an executable out of your Perl exactly. script? So you'll be able to do that. that that's a good option. Yeah. Um, I prefer Sigwin because I like the bash shell on, on all of my machines. <laughs> um, but I, tr I just tried Strawberry Pearl this week, and it works like a dream. Like it works so well. It installed the Nagios plugin module right out of the box. It was it worked really well. Okay, this is my attempt at hyperlinking from a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, you'll want this document up. We're going to try and actually write a plugin right now. So this is the uh, master. Plugin guidelines, spec, uh, whatever language you're working with, you can use this to define how plugins should behave. Everybody got it? It's hard to see what you're standing on. Sorry. Maybe I'll just sit down. <coughs> so we've got Perl. We're getting the documentation, the official spec. Oh, sorry, anybody still need more time? Raise your hand, okay. That document, we'll, we'll see examples of uh, Everything here except for translations. I haven't mm -hmm. done anything with translations. Okay, and so we've got documentation, we've got Perl. We need an idea for this exercise here. We're going to check, try to check the validity of a backup file. We're going to make Nag Nagios uh, warn us if the backup didn't complete successfully. Okay, so. We can write a simple plugin with a few lines. The, uh, this plugin just checks for the existence of the file brought in on the command line from uh, the first argument on the command line. And uh, if it exists, then we print out OK, and we exit 0, which is no problems. And otherwise, we print out critical and exit 2. Um, in most cases, it's actually the exit code that matters, but for human interaction, it's nice to have the text meaningful. Okay, that's all there is to it. That's your first plugin. You could write this in any language. Uh, however, when it comes to checking the validity of a backup, it's maybe, does anybody see any problems? Um, we can touch a file and create a zero length file and then our, our script will succeed. Our plugin, our check backup plugin will succeed. It's fine. There's a file of that name. And tomorrow, there'll still be a file of that name. And two years from now, there'll still be a file of that name. And it will be two years old. Maybe it shouldn't be succeeding. So life is complicated. We might want to check that it's not just that it exists, but it's less than a certain age, old, and uh, that's within a size range, uh, minimum and maximum. If it all of a sudden ballooned to four gigabytes, that might be a problem, so we'll let Nagios uh, warn us if that's the case too. Now, I'm not gonna cover restores right now. That would be even better. Do you have a restorable backup is a very interesting other question. Okay, there are also plugins out there already that could do this. So in the real world, always use something.